We are live. All right. So amid all the the isolation, COVID nineteen, <laughs> I'm going to try to do another live drawing here uh, for my millions and millions and billions of fans, my minions. Anyways, I thought uh, you know what? I'm going to teach people how to draw a pair of great tits. <laughs> I figured uh, those that know me, uh, like really know me, know I am a huge fan of uh, great tits. I have uh, I've been big into them for gosh a long time. Uh, you don't get to see uh, great tits around where I am very often. Hey 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 hey. <laughs> but uh, all joking aside. Uh, I'm going to take you guys on this adventure with me. So, when drawing a pair of great tits, what you want to really focus on is the fullness of the breasts. Uh, so, uh, I'm basically going to sort of just lay out uh, a guideline here of what, I, what it is I'm looking to do. So, I'm going to put one here. And then uh, I'm thinking... Uh, yeah, I'm going to just go more like this. No, I'm not liking that position of that that tip particularly. So we're going to go over here. We'll make them a little smaller. All right. There we go. That's nice and round and full. That's what we're looking for when you're drawing the first of your great tits. And then uh, over here, you know, um, at this angle in particular, the, the second great tit is definitely going to be smaller than the first one. So you want to keep that in mind. So positioning of this, uh, this second tit, the second great tit, is really going to be the key. Because uh, a lot of it is going to be hidden. The meat of it, of the breast, is going to be hidden behind uh, the first one. So once you got that, that's a, that's a good start. I mean... Uh, for the sake of uh, artistic purposes and for folks to see, I'm actually going to move my thing up here because that, uh, let's see, we'll move it down. That's nice, yeah. It almost looks like a butt cheek, but you know what? Butts and great tits have a lot in common, I suppose. I'm going to take a picture for posterity. <laughs> okay, tit time. Life. No continues 81. When, when life no continues 81. Yeah. <laughs> hey Fred, yes. So uh, normally I would not darken the, this line in particular, these two lines, but I'm just going to darken them a little bit so you can see. Um, yeah, I'm already not like in the one position, so I'm going to actually shorten this first one, and we're going to bring it a little bit further under, kind of like that. Yeah. I'm liking that. Both tits are uh, they're round, they're full, and uh, we're ready to go. I think we can start filling in all the accoutrements that make uh, a pair of great tits really stand out on the page. Uh, for those uh, at home that are following along, that uh, are, are either watching or doing this themselves, this is going to be an ink drawing, so um, we're going to just sort of rough pencils and then go from there. So I'm going to be doing a, a lot of uh, just sort of rough hashing it out. Nothing's going to be too fine. And as I said, I'm a huge fan of great tits. I love them. All right, here we go. So uh, up here, we're going to basically, you want to flare out this part here. And uh, it comes up into uh, sort of uh, kind of like a cranial area. And then the back of the great tit comes down here. And then the tail of the great tit sort of shoots out along here. Now the second great tit, which is uh, in behind the first great tit, is going to be parallel. Uh, uh, par parallel. Um, well, yeah. Uh, basically going to be copying the pose. Just I'm going to make it slightly different. Uh, I'm going to sort of make the head up in here. And for the sake of those at home, I'll do a a slight rough guide to give you an idea what it is that uh, I'm doing and you can see look 
my initial line was uh, bang on. So boom, and then I'll put this tail here. Now you might have heard me at home say, "What? What the heck? Tails? My great tits don't have tails. My great tits don't have a cranium." Well, you're gonna see the big reveal in a moment. Uh, I am a big fan of birds. I love birds. Uh, I'm also a big fan of dinosaurs. So uh, I thought I would do a nice little tongue-in-cheek drawing of uh, two of my favorite birds that I don't get around here. And that is uh, basically the great tit. Um, <laughs> I got I had to laugh when I, I read about these guys. Uh, the great tit, Paris Major, is a passerine bird in the family Paridae. It is widespread and common species throughout Europe, the Middle East, Central and East, across the Pale Arctic, to the Amur River. So basically, like uh, it's it's not anywhere near where I am up in Canada. Um, the equivalent, I guess, from my research would be a bird we call a chickadee. Um, it's part of the um, I guess it's part of the Passen Passenrine bird family or Paridae, and uh, about the same size, similar color but uh, more browns and stuff instead of uh, like the, these uh, great tits have, uh, as you'll see, um, they have uh, distinct markings. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna go in and we're gonna remove some of the line there. And uh, now I'm going to uh, start adding uh, just uh, uh, basically the tree uh, so I can start adding the feet. I'm gonna have this branch go this way and I'm going to make this branch sort of branch off and go back and in behind this way. And then we'll have one off here, maybe one off there, and maybe a little chunky branch here. All right, so uh, I think this would be a good time to take another picture. Yeah, like I said, I, I'm big into birds. Love them. Uh, I used to uh, buy donuts all the time at my former job, and I would feed... Uh, birds and I love the little chickadees and uh, like I said uh, I thought this would be a nice little tongue-in-cheek um, drawing two great tits or a pair of great tits basically a pair of birds <laughs> uh, yeah I'm not that hardcore anyways the first of the little legs are gonna go this way uh, he's got uh, basically three uh, digits and then uh, another one that goes back in behind then this leg is going to come up this way. We're going to pop that one down that way, that way, and boom. This one is going to come down kind of kind of that way. We're going to put the hook in here. Oh, there you go. Chickadees are the main state bird. Of what? Maine. Oh, Maine. Yes. The, the, the city Chris. of... The, oh, wow, I didn't know that. Oh, hey, Chris. I did not know that. The chickadee, eh? Yeah, I, I love the bird. Uh, I like birds in general. Um, thought this would be, like I said, a neat little drawing. All right, now we're gonna break down the color scheme and the patterning on the great tit. Um, I already noticed, and I kinda wanna switch this up here a little bit. We're just gonna make sure we got all these lines where they want them, where I want them to be. Uh, the head is, uh, like I said, large. Um, so these are insectivorous birds, whatever you want to call them. Um, they've got a, a ridge here, and then uh, the wing will come down and around here. And then, uh, basically, I've got some reference images here just to sort of give me a guide. And then we're going to add some lines here for the wings. And ba-doom, ba-doom. So it's going to be a rough penciling. Not going to get too detailed. All right, the eye, and then he's got the, these uh, great tits. Have this little, uh, uh, I guess it's a fringe of white that comes up here. And don't like my beak position, so we're going to switch that up a bit. There we go. Again, I like to use uh, a pliable eraser just because I can get in there and change the shape of it uh, as I need it. Um, this part here is going to be a light color and then he's got a fringe that goes around the neck. 
I do not know if these are a boy or girls. Uh, I didn't actually think about that until just this second. So right here I'm going to actually do some uh, line work. Um, some hatching that's going to be uh, sort of angled in a different way. Uh, you'll see as we go. Uh, do some light stuff here. Got a fringe of white there. And then these wings come up and each one of them seems to have like a dark patch to them. Alright, we're going to have a highlight in the eyes. Looks like they've got an outer ring and then uh, this area is pretty much going to be dark. Uh, same here. Make that dark there. And some lines and then uh, we're going to bird up the legs. Um, I can remember being a kid and that was one of my first big revelations uh, when I, I, I saw a chicken foot for the first time. Uh, it wasn't attached to a chicken anymore but uh, I was able to look at it and really study it and I thought man like those things look an awful lot like what I imagined dinosaurs would look like so that's when my fascination began. Alright we're just gonna again so we got our first great tit uh, and now I'm gonna highlight the second one uh, I added the other foot there and like I said all birds just uh, well, I think all birds have three toe four toes or yeah let's look that up I think that's one of their defining characteristics I know they have a certain kind of hip, that's what they share in common with uh, dinosaurs. So yeah, if you got any questions, I don't know, I'll check these now. Yeah, well, we already got to them, okay, yeah. perfect. So again, I'm just uh, highlighting this area here. So yeah, four, because they've got three in the front and they've got the one to the back. Yeah, seems to be pretty standard, good for grabbing, so like, you know, you can grab a ledge, you can uh, swoop in and grab prey. I guess I'll hold it out that way. All right, now uh, just adding uh, again, finishing up this second great tit. Uh, the highlight's going to be similar, uh, and then we're going to just. Uh, said I'm not going for perfection. I'm just going for. Uh, if anything, I'm really just sketching. So I'm actually going to change this tail. I don't think that tail would actually go up. Looks like it's going to come down, bam, and come down this way. So that'll actually be darker. And then this part of the great tits head, we're going to have a shadow. Now for any of you younger artists out there looking at uh, this going, wow, you know, you just looks like you're scribbling and scratching and how do you know where to put everything? Um, when you do stuff as often as I do when it comes to art and other things um, yeah you get you get good at it things like muscle memory click in and you start noticing well hey and I say this all the time I learned how to draw a toaster and now I know how to draw Mjolnir but a lot of things that you can learn in drawing Mjolnir can translate or learning how to draw a toaster can translate into drawing Mjolnir and vice versa which is weird because I learned how to draw Mjolnir first and then toasters <laughs> and to be honest I like drawing toasters not all the time but every now and again alright there we go we got a nice rough pencil uh, where's the timer on this thing no oh, I don't think we have a timer anyways we're only 13 minutes yeah 13 minutes not bad um, any other interesting facts about this lovely creature? Let's see. Uh, it's a oh. distinctive bird with a black head and neck, prominent white cheeks. So these areas are white, and then this under part here is yellow with uh, a black fringe, and then um, yellow under parts with some variation amongst the numerous subspecies. Uh, it's predominantly insectivorous. Uh, but will consume a wider range of foods. Uh, like all tits, it is a cavity nester. Hmm. 
That's perverted. Usually yeah. nesting in a hole in a tree. Oh, hole in a tree. Okay. The female lays around lays around 12 eggs. Whoa, that's a lot. Uh, they may be raided by woodpeckers, squirrels, weasels, and are infested with fleas. Uh, so ornithology is what I'm into, I guess. But yeah, that's uh, pretty interesting stuff. But the so is my grandmother. Is into what? Nerd. She's into birds. Yeah. Yeah. Clever. Mm. Okay. Now I'm uh, gonna do a quick inking here. I'm gonna grab myself a. Uh, So I got a Micron pen, 0, 05, uh, just a standard mechanical pencil is what I always use. I'll bring out a piece of uh, unused Bristol board just because it'll help uh, me not uh, blur up the other one. Okay, so I'm going to actually, we're going to start inking up on the, the back side of this great tit here. And again, I'm not uh, I'm not worrying myself about uh, making all the lines perfect. I'm actually going to go for uh, a very messy look. Uh, it's just something that I wanted to do before starting the video and I'm going to see if I can hold to it. I have a hard time with that part of drawing just because uh, I just want everything to be perfect. I know it can't be, and I've known for many years that it can't be. But I think that uh, the journey itself, even though you're never going to get to perfection, the journey itself is well worth the trip. I mean, you'll never get there, but as long as you're cognizant of that, I, I don't think you're going to do too much damage. You're just going to make yourself a better artist. I could be wrong. So these back tail feathers, I'm just going to sort of loosely do them there. And then uh, this wing part here sort of starts about here. It's got a little wingy bit there. And then these guys are long and they come right down. Some of them go under. Now, here's where I'm going to actually turn my little birdie. So, yeah, just so I can, uh, and pulling strokes, way better. I, I think I had an art teacher say something like that, and I don't know, I, I didn't listen. Mm -hmm. I, maybe, I, I guess I did, if I'm recalling it, but at the time I was, I eh, didn't give a crap. I'm like, whatever. I know everything. I'm never going to be an artist. I'm going to be a pro wrestler. Look at that, I just spit all over the page. That's lovely. <laughs> Need some tissue? Nah, we're good. Dan Day would think that's hilarious. He's like, yeah, I'll get cheesy dust all over my drone sometimes. He <laughs> told me that once and like, I almost pooped my pants. I was like, <gasps> no, no, you, you can't let cheesy, you can't even have cheesies in the room if you're drawing. <laughs> Apparently some artists can. I am not, not one of those, no. <laughs> So yeah, I'm gonna not do too much detail work on here. We're just uh, sort of highlighting areas that I'm gonna darken with a little bit of uh, a little bit of ink here. Um, like I said, a lot of times I get called upon to uh, draw stuff that's kind of outside my normal. Uh, I don't want to say skill range because like I try to draw everything, but things that. Uh, I generally am not known for drawing. So practicing birds and stuff like that really help me as an artist. Um, drawing while I'm talking also helps me. And now I'm going to shut up as I finish these wings. I think I've said that before but usually in a bar. <laughs> Back when I used to drink. Now shut up, I'm going to finish these wings. So yeah, again, we're not, uh, I'm not focusing too much on uh, super detail, just certain areas. I'm going to add some lines here because uh, these areas are all going to be darkened. 
and then we're gonna have some wing part here and then I'm gonna do that hatching I was telling you about but I'm not gonna do it with this particular pen we're gonna get a thinner pen go with a zero one micron um, I know a lot of guys don't use microns I personally have been shopping around if anyone's got some ideas of better pens I know some of the artists that I look up to use uh, um, similar ones um, others use different ones I simply use them at a convenience the wife can get them I thought you liked the microns well they seem to be the best so far but I just oh, keep you're wondering if somebody has a better one like a better version of like you. a pen that they've been using that like maybe last longer that you go through a heck yeah of well I know it was just George and Mike uh, some of the artists that I've uh, done not done comic cons with them but they've been at shows that I've been at and uh, neighbors. neighbors yeah stuff like that artists in different uh, levels of their their career and uh, I noticed that they all use uh, different versions of pens so I mean I mean imagine it's just a matter of preference so all right now gonna go in here and just ring the eye and then this part, like I said I'm going to actually darken most of this. So yeah, this part here is going to be, uh, it's going to be white. And then these areas here are going to be dark. And uh, I'm just going to add a bit of line work too. Um, God, I hate silence, I guess. Normally, like I said, I have podcasts and music's playing and stuff like that, so. I suggested Chris's idea of putting a earbud in one ear, but you didn't want to go with that. So. That's too complicated. I'm a simple <laughs> man. Yep. Okay, so. It's not bad. Uh, I already see some things that I should have taken, in, uh, taken into consideration prior to doing the drawing. Said I'm a big guy for measuring, so I, go, uh, I see my beak's a little off, but that's okay. Wouldn't be the first time my beak was off. <laughs> All right, so now we're, like I said, we're Isn't doing... That a saying? Like, don't get your beak in a brush or something? Heck if I know. Don't You're the English lady. Don't get your bit bitches. <laughs> Don't get your knickers in a knot. <laughs> I say that one a lot. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we're just doing the the. Don't get your tits tangled. Uh, yeah, that's that very apropos for this. Don't get your tits tangled. Okay. This is going to be the tree part. So a lot of the work I do do, do do, do 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 do, uh, is in the cryptid Bigfoot community world, I guess. That's what I do a lot of and uh, never thought that my interests in so many different avenues of like, like our ornithology and stuff like that and animals would ever serve me in any way. I always thought it was just going to be something that I was into, but really it has helped out because uh, a lot of times the the artwork that they want will also uh, contain uh, animals and other stuff and you know I'm big on setting a scene you know like when I was designing this like you think ah, oh, he's just drawn to two birds but I wanted to play with everyone at home because we're all in isolation and I thought if I said two great tits and I have a couple minutes of playtime and if I laid out the lines you could be thinking oh that looks like boobies and nobody would know until boom I don't know I'm a child maybe your next one can be a giant booby yeah blue footed booby <laughs> now you ruined it now nobody's gonna show up <laughs> yeah great well Sartler, like I said I know birds I know birds can't help it I love you I like birds. 
I don't ever want a bird as a pet. I'd like wild birds. What is a kid made of birds? You savage. Yeah, we had a budgie uh, <laughs> funny story. Oh boy. So I'll tell this while, while I'm drawing. Um, when I was uh, <laughs> living with uh, my mom and my brother and sister, now I say, well, who else would you be living with? Well, I didn't always have the best of circumstances as a child. So uh, sometimes <laughs> because of circumstances, I didn't always get to live where I wanted to. Anyways, one time, there was this big nasty storm and uh, my sister while well, the storm was sort of I think it was starting to abate a little bit or had lessened some was out and she found a budgie bird a freaking dirty filthy white and blue budgie bird just hanging out in a mud puddle it was all covered in filth and grime and she brought it home and my mom was like oh it's beautiful oh we'll, we'll keep it and so we did. Uh, we kept this budgie bird and we named him Budgie, of course, because <laughs> that's, uh, that's how we roll. And got him a cage and uh, he seemed to be down, down with the posse. He was a good bird, but uh, I don't know who got it in their head that he was lonely. So they decided to uh, buy him a companion. And uh, I don't know how this all came about, but anyways, a companion was bought for for Budgie the bird. And uh, this Budgie bird was one of those uh, green ones with like the yellow, and like it's more the traditional. I, I when I think Budgie bird, so we bought him this Budgie bird, and uh, to say he was excited would be a huge understatement. He was very excited. And from the moment that uh, we put that other bird in the cage, he screwed the life out of that poor thing. Fred, what a story. Come on now. He, he mounted him and, and proceeded to uh, show him affection that uh, whew, was very intense, thorough, and uh, not to be toyed with. It was very educational for us because, I mean, we were young and <laughs> didn't exactly know what the hell was going on. I, I kind of had an idea. And anyways, uh, long story short, uh, that uh, secondary budgie that we got for him uh, died. Basically, he screwed it to death. So we got him another budgie. Jesus! <laughs> and a similar thing happened. Basically, he got super excited and uh, mauled this other one to death with his love so to speak so you to speak you realize you can buy fake birds right oh we uh, we'll get there <laughs> hold on hold on so anyways we got this uh this bird so i think we ended up getting them a couple more and uh they ended up dying and somehow some way during this whole process budgie the bird it was discovered was Rapist? No, not a serial rapist. We assumed that he was, uh, we didn't really know, we we didn't know much about budgies, but uh, we had been getting him what we thought were female birds as companions, but in fact we were getting a male birds and budgie was a male himself. And that's when we learned that uh, at least our, our particular budgie wasn't very picky between uh, uh, what gender he was uh, professing his love to. He was just gender fluid. Very gender fluid. Gender <laughs> violent, too. But anyway, so... <laughs> what? Chris says you sacrificed birds to that Canadian psycho. <laughs> oh, it got bad. So anyways, yeah, we had to buy a fake budgie that looked just like the other budgies, and he proceeded to continue with his uh yeah the funny thing is i think my mom's boyfriend at the time or something kept calling him rocco and i couldn't understand it and i understand it now i think he was naming him after that porn star rocco or whatever uh, i don't know inside joke now that's outside but anyways <laughs> so yeah yeah this budgie uh yeah was very brutal and uh mauled and that's probably why he was in a puddle somebody yeah like somebody threw him out disturbed <laughs> yeah 
get rid of this go. bird. My sister probably remembers it. I don't know if my brother does, but uh, yeah, it was good times. <laughs> yeah, so that uh, that budgie was uh, a rough budgie. So anyways, um, back to the drawing of my great tits. Well, they're not my great tits. They're just a pair of great tits. So uh, um, I got them. What's that? Since they're not mine. They're not yours. Yeah, <laughs> they're the only great tits I have. I got. Oh, good answer. Yeah, I got great pecs. Ba ba ba. I can't even bounce them anymore. There, oh, we there go. you go. Ba 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 ba. <laughs> you look like Terry Crews. My belly's bouncing. Oh dear. Oh I well. Don't look like Terry anymore. Okay, here we go. All right, and then I just brought the graphite eraser out, and we're gonna erase that up. Now I'm gonna add a little bit more uh, tape to tape this puppy down, because um, we're almost done. You're like almost done? How can we almost be done? Yeah, um, I'm not gonna add too much more to this. I'm just gonna uh, go ahead and add some blacks with a black brush. So, whereabouts do we got this? <sighs> Somewhere. Nope, that's a number one. It's probably under my pillow. There it is. Alright, now uh, I'm just going to darken some areas here. Um, underneath the wing, I'm going to go in and... Uh, Sort of darken that a little bit. Um, this area here, yeah, we're gonna just add some dark stuff. Same here. Keeping in mind that uh, the great tits, uh, the way their feathers, they're gonna sort of come down, I guess, uh, is the way I'm looking at it. Now, this. I'm just going to run some blacks along here. Um, not worrying too much about making it look perfect. Uh, we're going to go ahead and black the eyes. Now, I mean, I, you could color this if you want it. If you wanted to, uh, after the fact, I'm not going to add any color. I'm just going to go ahead and... Uh, what color are they? Um, yeah, they got a yellow underbelly with, uh, shoot, I had it written, written down somewhere. No, no, it's just in my, yeah, they're, they're called a, they're, they got a black head and neck with prominent white cheeks, olive, so this upper part's kind of like got an olive-y color to it. Oh, okay. So yeah, we're gonna shade up certain areas here, add another line along here, because these tail feathers are going to be a little darker. Same thing with this bird over here. I'm just going to darken this area. And you can already see, I mean, like, just as an ink image, I mean, it looks pretty, I don't know, looks okay. Reminds me of the drawings from the uh, Reader's Digest. Yeah, well, hey, funny you mention that. Like, I, even to this day, I uh, I love comic books, but a lot of my inspiration, a lot of the art that, uh, or a lot of the stuff I get inspired by to draw and just practice my craft, it comes from weird sources like that. I used to love those reader digests and, like, medical books, too. Like, uh, especially, what's his name, Norman Rockwell. Mm. The way he could tell an entire story in just a few, like, just one image. You know what I mean? Uh, just incredible. I remember used to collect Norman Rockwell plates when I was a kid. Wow, that's that's a smart move. He was a talented artist. All right, so that's pretty good. Now I'm just gonna take a two, and I'm gonna go in here and uh, just give a little bit of a counterbalance for the shading, just to show the bird's got some weight to it. Now, ah. Uh, pair of great tits look pretty good I'm all tricky now you're never gonna know what's happening <laughs> I might say hey guess what I'm drawing a camel toe and everyone's gonna be like finally 
and it's just the toe of a camel. I'm, that was gross. No, I was gonna say what? Um, that, that went dark. That went. <laughs> Who's turning up for that? I don't know. <laughs> this is what happens when you get isolated down in a garage, and you still have to draw. You're not really isolated. Living. You live in a house with five other people. <laughs> like I said, isolated. <laughs> None of these people I want to talk to. Mm. I'm just joking. Yeah, I love Brandon. Yeah, I love those guys. Okay, so I'm gonna use uh, an ink wash here. Um, you got comment on YouTube. What's that? Where? The bottom one that's red on the right. Nice. Thank you. Thanks. Marat the Pony. What? Huh? I can't even see. I'm not wearing my glasses. So oh, I, I am. It says Marat the Pony. Okay, so, um, yeah, I'm just going to figure out which, uh, which ones are the, which tones are which here. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, that's my super dark. That's my super sort of light. So, I'm going to go with, uh, so I don't know if you guys can see it, but you'll see it when I use it. I'm going to go with, uh, it's a sort of a light gray tone. And, uh. We're going to come in here and just add some counter shading. And this part, I'm going to pretty much leave. Now this part here, I'm going to actually lay down two levels of this ink. The neat thing is, uh, if you get good at this, uh, using this type of uh, ink wash, I think it's what it's called, Again, I found out many artists have been using it for years. Uh, for a few months there, I thought I created it all on my own. I was like, man, I'm a genius. I have found a way to mix paint or mix ink with paint. Or no, mix paint with ink with water. Jesus Christ, I can't even talk. But turns out, even the neat little things that I do do that I haven't seen others do and been done by many others for many many years millennia did you see Chris's comment about what next live stream you should do a crazy Bob and Doug McKenzie scene complete with a UFO aliens and a Bigfoot jeez wow okay <laughs> I said that would be epic that would be epic that would take a lot of uh, a lot of research it could be worth it though. Who knows? If I start getting people viewing all the time, wanting to drop me millions of dollars, it millions. might be worth it. <laughs> I'll take dollars of dollars. Dollars nah. of dollars. Well, no, that's why I can't always film these videos. I wish I could. Uh, no, I don't. I'm getting. I'm enjoying them a little more. But uh, I, a lot of times, paid I have commissions have to come. First. Yeah, paid commissions, and even like with this all locked down. Uh, and like I, I've lost I haven't lost it yet but I'm gonna lose a fair bit just like many artists in my position that also travel uh, to do comic cons the fact that those aren't happening anymore that's going to uh, definitely affect my bottom line whatever the hell that is <laughs> whatever, basically my money my monies my monies you know I, I a lot of it like I, I, I didn't it wasn't like making a lot of money at each individual show is a collection of you know doing the shows and uh, doing commissions and, and all that stuff getting that, more commissions from the show yeah shows. that all helped and build but hey you know what we will rebuild when we are allowed out of the house again yeah everybody's getting the shit kicked out of them so or the language poop. this Sorry. is totally not pg this is like the worst stream ever Sorry, talking about I'm supposed to be PG. Birds. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, I could draw a duck next and go into duck penises. <laughs> That's enough. <laughs> ah, crap! Look what I just did. I just messed up. Uh -oh. That's okay. I'll show you a neat little trick to fix it. What I wanted to do, but I got distracted, was uh, I wasn't gonna color that all uh, one dark stretch here. I was going to uh, leave certain parts light. Uh, that's okay though. We're not trying to be perfect. Just trying to get through. Bob Ross says no mistakes, just happy accidents. 
Chris actually just said that. Oh, okay. I was <laughs> He's say, quoting Bob Ross. <laughs> Bob Ross dropping a line. Oh boy. Wow. Okay. <laughs> you know, COVID's bad. It is the zombies that we wanted for the apocalypse. Oh man. Can you imagine that? That should be a comic book, yeah. Mm -hmm. Waking up and Bob's Bob Ross? Bob Ross? <laughs> this isn't happy. <laughs> Where are my happy trees? <laughs> happy little trees. Alright, so again just uh adding uh the dark layers here. I'm gonna shade the underside. Uh, I'm not worried about perfection. Just got some action from the back section. Body moving, body moving. A one sound and the sound starts grooving. Body right. moving, body moving. Never gonna get a strike. Nobody's gonna be able to view your videos. People don't listen to Beastie Boys anymore, do they? You do. Of course I do. I think pretty sure everybody does. They should. Anyway, so we're coming to the end of this almost. I'm just uh, again adding. Ooh, that dried much lighter, anyways. What's that? The wing. You were concerned about it all going in dark. But then oh yeah, no, I wasn't concerned uh, of the dark. Um, it, that that that's fine. Um, my concern was more. Um, I wanted these areas to be light, uh, counter to that, but uh, it's okay. It's not a big deal. I can fix it in a second. I like finches. Yeah, I, I like finches too. I like watching uh, seagulls and stuff, even though they're dummies. I love seagulls. Yeah, I watched a video of a seagull yanking a freaking rabbit out of the ground and eating it. What? Yeah. Oh, God. I think they're going through some stress. <laughs> You know what I mean? No more McDonald's. Everybody on frickin' isolation. Oh, crap. Look at that. Grab the wrong frickin' color. Uh-oh. That's okay. That's okay. It looks kind of like shade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. Are you using your eyeglass cleaner to clean up Is ink? that what this is? Yes. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. wonder why your glasses are dirty all the time. No, well, that could explain it. That's fine. Oh, well. The reason why I only have two colors is because if I have more, I fucking mess the whole thing up. Alright, it's okay. Uh, I want it kind of messy. Now, I'm going to go in there and uh, i got to add another layer of the blacks. Now, you got to be careful. Why am I bending down and going all wonky like this? Just because... Uh, I want to make sure I'm not going to get any bleeding. You'll see where this dark bled into that, and that's fine. That uh, can be a neat little technique you do. All right, so we're going to add some dark here. And all this does is uh, just layers the, the, the color, or layers the, the image, so it's got depth. The more layers you put in, the better. Like even with digital artists who, you know, they get a bad rap. I, I know I give them a hard time or have in the past, but it's still art. Um, you know what I mean? You got to know what you're doing. And that's why some of the best uh, digital colorists and digital artists are usually pretty damn good artists. And I uh, usually have a good understanding of both. That's why I'm not a really good artist. I'm good at what I want to do when I want to do it. Very bad at doing anything anyone wants me to do when they want me to do it. <laughs> but then you're like, well, how, how, how do you pull off these commissions? Trickery! Trickery and bribery. We have to make him think he wants to do it. Yeah, so really I hate drawing birds apparently. But uh, I'm just crazy. Anyways, <laughs> so uh, almost done here. I'm just going to add a, an underlining uh, dark line to this side of the tree. Uh, I've got some fuzz. Uh -oh. That's something that uh, I've had to really adapt to is uh, giving up on trying to have a perfect situation. I mean, like I, I try to make it as perfect as I can when I can. Uh, so when I'm filming or like when I'm doing a commission, I try to make it as perfect as I can.
You said that. Did I? Sorry. <laughs> just keep repeating it. But the reason why I'm bringing it up is because uh, this type of art that I'm doing right now where it's not about perfection is actually very valuable for all artists. And it's something that I've learned not because any of the artists I've interacted with at Comic Cons have sat down and taught me. It's just something that I've observed and had conversations with about and learned. So. Came in yeah, they? they did. Uh, what are we at? 45 minutes. Okay, looking good. Um, I'm going to go in and we're going to add some white to that uh, in just a second. I just want to kind of let it dry a bit because, um, yeah, I would let it, I would let it lie, but I'm not going to because I think it'll, uh, it'll add a little bit more. So I'm going to bring in some white ink. And it's just uh, Bombay White Doc Martin. Yeah, Dr. P.H. Martin's ink. This particular bottle's been around since 1934. I'm going to open it up for the first time on camera for all of you guys. That's what it means when it says Dr. Martin's 1934, right? Yeah, they've been around since 1934. This bottle's been around since no, 1934? The company. Damn it! It's not a wine. Ah! I thought I was about to open some vintage ink. Yeah, I don't know why more people don't pay attention to me. I'm the most entertaining guy on YouTube. Thank you for asking. asking. <laughs> oh, that was one of those phantom questions. Nobody <laughs> asked it. I just thought it would be good. Yeah. That's okay. Uh, I have two viewers. I like to chronicle that because maybe uh, it'll be a little better in the future. Who we did knows? have three, but one life no continues. I think left when they figured out it wasn't birds. Boobs, I mean. Boobs. That's okay. <laughs> I'm kidding. I don't know. <laughs> they could still be there. I just don't know. This is as close as I get to getting oh, raunchy and hardcore. So there you go. You got another viewer. Thanks. Hey, guys. Uh, just because, like I said, I got I, I used to be a, an after school teacher uh, and a uh, like an EA and stuff like that. Worked in like athletic programs and art programs and got a lot of kids that uh, check out my artwork and stuff. So I try to be as PG as I can. I got a little bit of R rated there, but that's because it's been a crazy few weeks. Oh, okay. That's the one good thing weightlifting has come in handy for, opening tiny little ink jars. I actually have to have vice <laughs> groups down here because on occasion well, I can't get my mitts around them. So I'm not going to use much and I'm just going to uh, actually dab a little bit down on uh, my page here. Yeah, I got a little scrap off to the side and it's looking pretty good. Now um, I'm going to go in here and uh, I got a nice fine line brush fine line is uh, it's got a like a long uh, brush yeah now yeah, I'm pretty pretty articulate right now <laughs> anyways uh, it's just a, I guess a, a 10 out of 0 so it's good for making line work um, yeah, everything seems to be dry enough, so I'm going to dab this up and I'm uh, going to test it because i got to see how it looks over here. Perfect. Looking good. I'm going to hit this spot here too. And then, uh, like I said, I want to highlight a certain part here. So we're going to actually come back and go like that. Again, I'm not working for perfection, just trying to get it. Now, if you do end up using this Doc Martin white ink, I have used it before. It's awful. It's not great. Uh, I've, I've tried other stuff. I, I think I'm going to be switching to something someday soon. The reason why it's awful is it's, it's not like ink. The rest of their ink, oh, beautiful. Some of the best ink I've ever used. This stuff you can see right here. It, it's very gloppy, very... Uh, I think it's supposed to be. Are you going to paint over 
a darker color if it's you're not thicker. seeing what I'm talking about though Des look at this stuff it's it's not consistent it's oh, like it's, it's gloopy it's gloopy it's like snot it's like somebody boogered in my freaking my, my paint did you shake it yeah mm -hmm. no yeah I don't know we'll have to check the video <laughs> anybody watching at home did I shake it shake your money maker all right. Uh, just the Derek seventy seven says, "Hey, Fred, you are still the best artist around. You do good work. Oh, you for thank sure you. don't let your talent go to waste. Keep thank you, up. thank you. That is very nice of you. Okay, and I'm gonna go in here and just around here, I'm gonna add uh, again just some some white line work. It just uh, cleans it up, makes it look nice. And I go in there and do the same thing over here." Now, a lot of folks are like, uh, you know, I have been reading online a lot. Uh, Freaking people still having a hard time. You see young artists posting, oh man, uh, I, I don't know what to do. Uh, so I, I, I draw from references and, and I had a buddy of mine, he, he told me that that's cheating. He says, that's not real art. Um, that that person doesn't know what they're talking about I mean you can draw from your memory if you want you can use references personally I like to use references whenever possible just because it adds to the drawing even if uh, the drawing in question doesn't uh, look like the original source material depends on what you're doing it for no, you could be doing it just for like an overall shape yeah, 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 yeah. Or the flow, you like the flow of that picture, but it's not necessarily the subject matter you want. Right. So, yeah, and um, for the sake of those at home, I will show you the reference pictures at the very end of this video. Now, just again, why I'm just adding some more little bits here. Less is more, more is less. You don't want to go too crazy. Uh, it looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. Um, now, something that I always seem to forget, signing your artwork. You know what, I'm actually, I think I'm going to... Send it along the branch. I'm going to throw a cloud in here too. A cloud? How high up are they? Well, I don't know. Maybe not a cloud cloud, but... Ah, you know what, it's done. I don't think it needs a cloud. You could have drawn like maybe a skyline or something, but you wanted to keep it simple. Right? Yeah, I do. But I got a big brush and I got a little bit of uh, ink here. Glad I caught the end of this. Yeah, good thing. The the the, the star was a train wreck. <laughs> no, I'm going. It's okay. It's <laughs> I'm just joking. So yeah, now uh, I'm gonna actually go in here with uh, a little bit of dark uh, ink, and I'm just gonna highlight a little bit, uh, just a little bit along here. See, that's the part I think that terrifies most artists. What's that? It's like you've already got a decent looking picture and then you're like, yeah, I'm just going to take this brush and just go. Yeah, well, that's again uh, talking to folks that, uh, um, yeah, when you do it long enough and you've uh, progressed, uh, you start getting confident with certain choices like that. Not always. I mean, if I still have a hard time with it. I don't like this one. I already realized I don't like what I did, so I'm going to change it slightly. Not much. There we go. This is what I'm needing. Perfect. Yeah, well, it is kind of frustrating weird. I, uh, 
I just like I said, I, an artist like uh, Bruce Sherman that I, I never actually saw him paint, but I, I saw his paintings, so I can see his uh, the marks in his work. Had a straight line up here. Tree. Yeah, not much. <laughs> just like that. And wait for it to dry a little bit. I got one more last trick I want to add. There we go. But anyways, yeah, I... That's really neat because I thought those were like clouds and I'm like, oh, you messed up those clouds something fierce. And then as soon as you put the trunks in, I'm like, yeah. oh, it's freaking trees. No. That's an awesome canopy. I like yeah, that. Yeah, I realized what I was doing midway through. Yeah, it's tough because uh, sometimes um, I don't want to bring a drawing over, uh, but I have one over here that I wish I could show you, but it's the little things in the drawing. Um, sometimes... Uh, the birds themselves are great. You know what I mean? Wit Triple X says it's nice to see your process. Thank you. Uh, again, I'm working on stuff. Uh, I'm hoping to show folks more uh, different techniques that I use. But who knows what will happen. And you'd like to share your process. Yeah, I do. And I like to, uh, I like to check out other folks' process, too. Um... I don't learn well from uh, sitting down and talking to somebody, or sorry, by like by being educated in that way, like uh, you know, like sit down and do what I do and say what I say, and this is this is what works. You know, I, I work much better by working on my own and you know observing others, I suppose. So now I'm just gonna add a little bit of dark like this not much I'm just gonna add it on the underside to sort of hint that there's a tree up in here up in here the reason why I'm doing that is I want to go in and just highlight the one side and then do the same thing over here and then this is a done deal so says done so it is written, so let it be done. <laughs> you don't know how many times I would do that as a corny kid when I saw Yul Brenner in the uh, Ten Commandments. It was like, oh, oh, that's a great thing to say. I'm also a bit of a history buff, guys, sorry. All right. Before we get too complicated and too complex, we're going to jump off this because I could sit here and, and spend all day doing it. But the thing is, like I was saying to the wife, when she was asking, like the scary part of an artist is, you know, making the mess. But as you can see, that added a little bit to the drawing. And when it dries, it'll look, uh, it'll look even better. Sometimes messy is better. And it's a great uh, technique to try. So I hope you guys like this video. Uh -huh, you were going to show your reference pictures. Oh, that's right, right. Okay, I got them right over here. Boom, boom, boom. These are my two birdies that I used. So just to give you guys an idea, I kind of imagine that we'd have this one in the foreground. And I, you know, kind of kept the position the same. Changed a few things. So instead of the tree branch going that away, I put his leg <laughs> back more. Why do I think of these things? I, I don't know. I, it's important to me. And then with this one, this was the reference. I knew most of it would be hidden behind him in order to pull off my initial... Look at those two titties. Or, sorry. I don't know if that's the plural form for more than... What is the plural? It's tits. Tits. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. But, yeah, over in Britain and other places in Europe... Uh, the the tits uh, are a type of bird parasidae or whatever they're called what did i call it yeah i wonder if that's where titters from paris major yeah you know so big in japan oh oh wait uh there's now separate they're two distinct species there's also the Cinereus tit of southern southern Asia. Did you just say serious? Cinereus. Oh, I thought is it serious? And I'm uh, like, it wow, could be serious. I can't. I can't spell. <laughs> Anyways, hope you guys like this video. Uh, like I said, those were my references. Uh, my reference images. 
Um, you know, if I wanted to make this an exact replication of those, I could. I would take this particular bird and I would measure. You know, pretty you much. See what you're doing. Yeah, nobody can. No. So I'd measure like, you know, okay, his breast is three, from top to bottom is three and a half. So I'd kind of lay it out. You know, I probably would have made the, the initial drawing roughly the same size. Oh, they're in Nova Scotia as well. So, who? The Great Tits. Oh, are they? The, they're in Canada at all. I didn't even know that they were in Canada at all. That's awesome. Wow, I really don't like that foot. Oh well. Anyways, I <laughs> uh, hope you guys like and subscribe. Check out some of my other content on YouTube. Also, uh, I upload stuff daily on Instagram. You know, basically just uh, little uh, progression pics of some of my artwork. Um, if you want to reach me, you can reach me at dreadfun.com. Yeah, www.dreadfun.com. Um, via my YouTube account, Dreadfun. Uh, you can contact Fred Dunn on Facebook. That's my real name. We also have Dread Fun on Facebook. Dread Fun on Facebook, yeah. Yeah, just because <laughs> other people own my name. They don't own your name. They, just got, they got, got to it first. <laughs> That's all, which is so odd because, like, I'm like, you know, what loser is going to name their kid Fred Dunn? Four of them did it. Five, because I'm, I'm the fourth and my son's the fifth. And then I find out that there's millions of them out there on Facebook. It's quite common. Yeah, real common. It's cool. <laughs> common as muck. Yeah. All right. Uh, anyways, uh, until I upload another one, if you guys have any suggestions, uh, you know, let me know uh, for like a live video. I can try to fit them in. Uh, I'll try to do another one, hopefully, sooner rather than later. And I'm going to be filming a whole whack of... Uh, some more of my time-lapse videos here on YouTube that you can check out. They're not as uh, long or as informative as these sort of uh, jumps down a rabbit hole, I guess, with me. With but, which we get to spend more time. Yeah, and uh, it's a different experience. And uh, this isolation kind of has helped me overcome some of those issues I have of doing this. So anyways, yep. Uh, don't forget to like, pass the video around, share it, please, 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 please share it, because I'm not really good at asking for help. I'm actually terrible at it. Uh, so all the help you can give me by sharing it and liking it and just getting it out there, it, it, it really does add up. I mean, uh, I don't get paid a lot to do these videos, but uh, they am the, they themselves have generated income and uh, exposure and stuff don't get me wrong like I mean if you if you message me and say I'd like you to draw this and I can't pay you anything it's not going to be something that I can instantly do uh, it might take a few years like some of these but anyways I'll, I'll try to fit whatever I can in all right I don't know when to say goodbye so I guess I will say good